In this lesson, we are going to explore the idea of pressure exerted by liquid column. This is the learner's outcome. We will learn the relationship of pressure due to a liquid column is actually the height of the column multiplied by the density of liquid and the gravitational field strength. These are some of our prior knowledge that you need to know. Pressure exerted by liquid. The general pressure formula cause is just pressure equals to force over area. And in our previous lesson, we have only used solid objects exert pressure using their weight. Since liquid has weight, it must also have exert pressure. So imagine this. In a swimming pool, have you experienced that when you dive completely into it, you feel that there's something pressing on your eardrums? It is because the water is exerting a pressure on you. Look at these two person, comparing one and two, which who do you think would feel a greater pressure from the water? Person one or person two who have died deeper? If you have done so before, you agree with me that most likely the person two would have uh, experienced a greater pressure on his eardrums. So this is set up to show you that the greater the depth, the greater the pressure. So this is actually measuring uh, the pressure and as you go deeper you find that the number increases. Okay, So it means that at greater depth the pressure uh, of the water is actually increased. So you can see that the depth in the which the person dives in affect the pressure that's being exerted on and the general conclusion is that the deeper the depth the greater the pressure. What are some of other factors that will affect the pressure of the liquid? There's actually a particular pressure formula that applies to liquid but actually to be more specific it's actually more uh, applies to fluid that takes a different form from what we are familiar with. The form that we're familiar with is pressure equal to force over area but this particular formula is actually still based on this just that it takes a different form. So how do we do that? So imagine a block of liquid that contains in a tank and the liquid is of a height h and a base area of a so this is the area that we are talking about and the tensile of the liquid is rho okay pronounced as rho so the pressure exerted on the base area is still force over area but in this case the force is actually equivalent to the weight of the water so the weight of water actually exerts a pressure on the base area and weight of water of course is just mass times g mg um, Recalling that the mass is actually equals to uh, volume times density. So mass is equals to volume times density. And but how do we calculate volume? Since this is a block of water, which means that you can calculate the volume of the water by having a base area multiplied by its height. And of course multiplied by the density. So summing it up we have this. We take the force, it takes this particular form. So substituting it back into pressure equals to force over area, you find that this is actually equivalent to force. So this is what happens. But you realize that there's a common term A, so we can cancel away. You find that it's simply just a H bit rho G, where H is the height of the liquid, rho is the density of the liquid, and G is the gravitational field strength, which is uh, on Earth is just about 10. So what does it mean? Though we have been emphasizing that pressure depends on both force and contact area, but for fluid or liquid, it doesn't seem to do so. Let's use example. Let's compare two pails of water that have different areas, base area of 5 meters and 10 meters square, but has the same height of 0 0.5. So let's just calculate the pressure on x using actual numbers. So we go through the same thing. Force is equivalent to the weight. Okay, then we calculate what's the weight. Weight is equal to mass times g, so it's volume times density, and volume is the base area multiplied by height. So we know that the base area is five multiplied by zero point five. So we find that this is base area. Uh, this is the volume multiplied by the density of water, which is one thousand, and then multiplied by g, which is ten. Okay, so uh, the weight is actually twenty-five thousand newton. Thus, pressure of x 
uh, is actually weight divided by the area so it's 25,000 divided by 5 so you have 5,000 Pascal let's do the same thing for Y so you run through it exactly the same except that of course the area is this time around is 10 rather than 5 so we calculate the volume times density the volume is still base area multiplied by height so it's 10 times 0 0.5 and you find that the weight this time around is 50,000 Newton as compared to 25,000 for this so this is 25,000 this is 50,000 but if you calculate put it back pressure you calculate the pressure you find that it's weight divided by area but this time around the area is actually 10 so it's still 5,000 you realize that of course the pressure exerted by X and Y are actually both the same Okay, though the pail, bigger pail has a bigger base area, the pressure exerted did not decrease. It's because the weight or the weight force exerted on the pail of that bigger pail actually also has increased correspondingly. Likewise, if the base area becomes smaller, the weight of the water also becomes smaller, or thus keeping the pressure to be the same. So pressure equals the force over area. So what happens is that area becomes bigger, but the force also becomes bigger. So pressure remains the same. So despite having a different base area, pressure of both the pails with the same height, okay, same height are the same. So some application of the concept. Assuming that these are the, all the same liquid uh, in all the containers, arrange the container according to the pressure exerted by the liquid on the base of the container from the highest to the lowest. So you want to find the pressure uh, A, pressure B, okay and C and so on which one is the highest if you base on just looking at this diagram since the container contain the same type of liquid it means that the density is equal so if you base on the liquid pressure formula the pressure in this case depends only on the height so if this is the same this is the same so if you have a greater height it means that it has a greater pressure so if you want to arrange from highest to lowest, you find that the answer is A, B, highest, then followed by A, followed by B, but is equal to C. So, so it's just only dependent on the height. It's not dependent on the shape. Okay, recalling back, the deeper the depth, the greater the pressure exerted. So isn't it different from the formula as we, as uh, the pressure of liquid depends on the height? So one is height, one is depth. Okay, this common misapplication is this. Okay, uh, is that when you depend on the pressure of liquid, you take the height starting from the bottom. That means that if you want to determine what is the pressure over here, you take height H. And if you want to determine the pressure of uh, at B, it is height B. But this is incorrect. Okay. The correct application is that we should, if you want to find the height of the liquid, you should start from the top. Meaning that if you want to find what is the pressure over here, you should start from the top and you measure down. Okay? Or same thing as if you want to measure the pressure at B, you should take starting from the top and you measure down. So this is the height B, okay, and this is height A. Think of it as in because the pressure exerted by the liquid comes from the top. So we consider all layers of water that's above us. So if you see that A is this pressure, so you find that if you want to find the pressure exerted on A, is this are the layer of water that's relevant. Okay, same thing if you want to find the pressure at B, this is all the layers of the water that is relevant, not the one that is at the bottom. So let's come to a practice. Assuming that this water that has a column of height of 1 meter, I want you to calculate the pressure of water at point A, B, and C. So pressure at A is equals to this using the formula, but remembering the height in this case is this. This is the one that is relevant. So that's for it is uh, 0 0.35 or 35 centimeter. But please do convert into meters. And you find that's 3005 Pascal. Pressure of B is not 20, but you find that the height B should include everything on top, which is 35 plus 20. So the pressure is 0 
or uh, is a five thousand five pascal. Pressure at C is the easiest. You take the entire column, which is of course one meter. So it is ten thousand pascal. Okay, that's all for today's lesson. Please subscribe and support my channel for my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics. Please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.